Hi everyone, welcome to this very exciting lesson where we talk why we have to reduce sodium in hyponatremia by no more than 10 to 15 milli equivalents per liter per day in more than 48 hours. And the timing here is what's important, the day and the 48 hours. Before we talk about that, we have to talk about what happens in normal conditions at the brain level and then what happens under dehydration conditions at the brain level. So we're only talking about brain right now. And let's take the normal conditions, let's get a sodium of 140. For all my sketches, I'm gonna draw a red blood vessel. And right next to it, I'm gonna be drawing a white brain cell with the nucleus right there. I'm gonna represent those model particles in the blood vessel with these white dots. And for the most part, uh, the osmolality of the serum is determined by sodium. So that's why we're talking about sodium, but also glucose and BUN play a role in the osmolar particles. For every osmolar particle that's outside the cell, there has to be one inside the cell. So those are my white particles there, such that the balance between the outside and the inside of the cell is matched. So the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid have the same osmolality. So let's draw a line here and see what happens under conditions of dehydration. So this is the patient that you're gonna be seeing in the emergency department when they first arrive after vomiting or having diarrhea after two, three days. And I'm gonna make up here, here my blood vessel that I drew above and the brain cell right next to it with its so smaller particles inside. But now you get a sodium that is not 140. You get a sodium, a measure sodium that is 160, 170. So I'm going to be drawing so many more sodium particles there because the measure sodium is so much higher. You can see now that the balance should shift such that there has to be fluid coming out of the intracellular component to the extracellular space down the osmotic gradient. So the first thing that happens to this brain cell is it's going to lose a lot of its water. So after a few hours, it's going to look like this. It's going to look very densely populated and that hypertonicity is going to match the hypertonicity of the extracellular fluid. So the first thing that happens in dehydration, the first phase, is shrinkage of cell volume. But that has to be restored. So the second phase acts to restore that cell volume. So the restoration. That also happens in a matter of hours. It doesn't happen immediately, but you should assume it has happened by the time you see your patient in the emergency department. So let me make up here, here my um, hypertonic blood vessel of my dehydrated patient and all its densely osmolar particles inside and right next to it my tiny brain cell that has shrunk down. This cell is going to want to restore its original volume. It's going to want to go back to what it used to be. And it needs to steal the water back from the extracellular fluid. So for every water particle that's drawn in, there has to be something, a component in that cell that draws it back in. So let's talk about what that is. So the original cell had its, its own smaller particles inside, but by now it's made those purple smaller particles, the new smaller agents that act to draw the water back in and restore the cell volume. And those new smaller particles are called idiogenic osmols. It's proteins that you have to make from scratch. That's why it takes the body hours to make them. So let's draw another line here and scroll down where we can talk about treatment. On the left hand side, I'm going to talk about fast treatment, which is inappropriate treatment. On the right hand side, I'm going to talk about slow treatment over a period of days. So for both occasions, I'm going to quickly make up here my hypertonic blood vessels and my now restored brain cells with their idiogenic osmos. And in the fast treatment, we're going to introduce IV fluids in the vein really quickly, really fast. So within a matter of hours, hopefully not minutes, but within a matter of hours, this blood vessel is going to go down its a smaller uh, concentration and looking what it used to be. So this is a, a sodium of 140 and let's say it changed from a sodium of 165. But you can see now this brain cell that I have right next to it with the idiogenic osmos inside feels very hypertonic compared to the extracellular fluid. It's going to draw actually water inside of it. And the more and more and more water that goes inside the cell, the larger and larger and larger the cell becomes until it eventually breaks open. And cell swelling at the tissue level equals brain edema. That's why it's very dangerous to treat very fast. However, on the right hand side now, if we treat very slowly and we allow this blood vessel to go from 165 of sodium down to the 140, 
if we now have time for the cell to break up those heterogenic osmoles, at, at least most of them, there's still going to be some inside, then there's no net positive or negative fluid shifts. But the cell needs at least two days for it to be able to consume all these proteins you just made. That's the reason why we have to go very slowly. So let's zoom out and scroll back up where we can review the key concepts we talked about, which are the osmolality for the most part is sodium, and usually at the brain tissue, extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid are matched. The first thing that happens is shrinkage of cell volume, and the second phase that happens in dehydration before the patient comes to the emergency department is restoration of that cell volume by making those idiogenic osmoles. That takes a few hours. If you treat fast, we're effectively putting IV fluids into the intracellular fluid and then we're causing brain edema. We don't want that to happen. We need to treat slowly, at least over a period of two days, so that we give the cell, the brain cell, a chance to consume those idiogenic osmoles so it doesn't swell up. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you check out the other videos online.